His stage bravado gripped audiences from the jump and never let up over his 64-year career. Not bad for an aspiring hairstylist from St. Louis. I'm talking about the man people call the father of rock and roll. Charles Edward Anderson Berry had a gravitational pull all his own. He was charming, soft-spoken, and oh so determined to succeed in an era that wasn't kind to black artists. Chuck Berry's first chart appearance with Maybelline on the storied Chess Records label arguably created crossover. Ushering in a style of music that never betrayed its blues, swing, and country DNA, but still connected with young audiences who were starving for something different. Unlike so many of his contemporaries, Chuck Berry wrote his own songs. He writes them, he records them, and he makes them hits. Here he is, the one and only Chuck Berry! Not just any songs, mind you. Songs that were clever and relatable. Songs that resonated deeply with America's youth. But as extraordinary as Chuck's songwriting and performance craft were, at the end of the day, it was that guitar phrasing that set his music apart. The boogie-woogie roll, those double stops, and those multi-string bends coursing through his pickups that willed rock and roll into existence. He created the blueprint all of us have followed since he first slung a Gibson over his shoulder. My father left the world stage the way he took it, with little compromise and few regrets. And along for that ride, his most prized possession, his Gibson ES355. This is more than vintage. This is lineage. This is American musical heritage. Hail, hail, rock and roll. <laughs>